Hello, I'm Mark Abelli with The Art of Diesel, where we are all about diesel and automotive efficiency, performance, and independence. And today I'm going to give you an update on my work on Ivana, the turbo diesel that we've been working on for the past few months. And uh, externally, you're not going to notice a whole lot of differences. The bumper cover on the front is cracked and it's actually made worse by the fact that I've got an intercooler pushing on it a little bit. Um, I'm going to relocate this intercooler, but this is a Mishimoto J-Line intercooler in here. Um, you can see the blue silicone hoses at the ends. I do have another bumper cover on order. This thing's brittle. I would look at patching it up, but I've seen it crack enough in different ways that it just needs to be replaced. Um, there's still a lot of cosmetic work to be done on this vehicle but here at the back end the other difference that you're going to notice when you see the car is that we now have a pair of magnaflow mufflers on the rear i cut off the mercedes ones and i put these in their place and they sound pretty good i think all right so some paint work was done on the engine that's just cosmetics everything looks pretty now what you can't see under here we've got a hybrid turbo We've got the oversized Mishimoto J-Line intercooler. We've got a cleaned up intake, no resonator down here, no EGR cooler over here. This has been blocked off and the mixer inside has been removed. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that we get the best flow we can. And also the swirl vanes have been removed and there's no more motor. There's a lot less clutter here under the hood because some of that equipment has gone. And, um, that's about it for physical changes. The other big change would be that there's no catalyst down underneath there and the uh, exhaust system that I've opened up. Starts right up, idle smooth, running beautifully. Do you know that when I close the hood, we wind up with a fair amount of vibration. You're going to hear and see that. You hear that? They really need engine mounts. The engine's running smooth, but but it's reaching some resonant frequency and the engine mounts that are on it are not absorbing anything. So far I've talked about the hardware modifications that were made to this car. However, a certain amount of software modifications need to be made as well, or firmware if you will. and. Uh, the next section of this video, I'm really going to be showing how I made those modifications uh, using tuning I purchased from ECU Tuning Countess. And um, if you'd rather just jump ahead to seeing the car run some more, uh, hearing how the exhaust sounds, and uh, seeing some good acceleration, then you can jump to the timestamp that I'm going to show right here. Otherwise, the next section of this video is really about what was done to the software on the car uh, to flash the ECU, the engine control unit, and the TCU, the transmission control unit, in order to make this car function better as a unit. I've got the Kesson installed in the car and running. I've received the files from ECS Tuning Countess, and um, I've got them on this computer. I'll start running K-Suite in a few, but first, let's take care of a couple other things. One is, Gotta make sure that we don't run low on power. So I've got the battery charger hooked up. Go down here to the fan connector. I don't know if I'll be able, you'll be able to see it on film. I'll squeeze that connector and pull it out. So the fan is disconnected. Okay, the car's up and running. Let's get K Suite going. Okay car and then we're going to go to Mercedes-Benz got E320 CDI 5AT selected let's go OK let it connect and we're going to write select and next we're going to go ahead and use the stage 2 uh, file right here that was provided by ECU Tuning Countess and we'll hit open on that
Okay, yep, I am running a battery charger. The fan is also disconnected. Okay, we're switched on, ready to continue. I gotta switch it off. Proceed to right. Here we go. Yes, it's the right file. Switch it off. Switch it on. Okay, switch it off. Hit okay. Writing ECU completed. Okay. Analyzing the log. I think it'll tell me if there were any errors. And I think we are done. Okay, it snapped in place good. Okay. Seems to be running smooth. No complaints here. Yeah, it would certainly run better if I had the four bar map installed. Four bar map. It feels good. Yeah, let's make sure we clear codes. Yep. So if we go to fault codes again, nothing. Let's just double check those pin numbers. Let's see, we got this right side up. No, we got it all upside down. Oh my goodness. Look for fault codes again in the transmission. Well, that's strange. thing I'm going to do is violate the warranty. <clears throat> there. Right there. Protocols, this one, whoops. Siemens EGS fifty two. Yep, yep, yep. Back up. Read.
Siemens EGS-52. Still says that. I don't know then. Maybe it's okay. So comfort mode, agility mode, manual mode, sport mode, comfort mode. Next, I'm going to move that intercooler into a better position and do some cosmetic work on the car. When I come back later, what I will be able to do is provide measurements. How is the car actually behaving? Uh, especially as things have a chance to settle in electronically, as adaptation occurs, and that sort of thing. I would say over the past couple days of driving the car, adaptation has already made a big difference. And um, the only thing I'm concerned about right now is that intercooler rubbing on the bumper cover. So I'm going to fix these, this and a few other things. Um, Meanwhile, I'm going to put out some more content on some of the changes that I made, showing more of the hardware, talking about things like the turbo, the exhaust, and other things that got modified in order to uh, provide more technical background to what was done to the car. So thanks for watching the video.